Traditional Newari House The Newar's impact on Nepal's history is unparalleled. Their art, culture, language, and way of life have breathed life into the historically and archaeologically significant Kathmandu Valley. The settlements, language, and artistic expression found there have captured global attention. The Malla era extended for over five centuries from 1200 to 1768 CE. During this extensive period, Newari architecture experienced a significant expansion throughout the entire valley, manifesting in diverse architectural forms and monuments. Consequently, when people speak of Nepali architecture today, they commonly allude to Newari architecture with some discreditable influence from Tibetan and Indian styles. Within the span of Malla rule, numerous traditional Newari settlements took shape, laying the foundation for what is now recognized as vernacular Newari architecture. Traditional Newari houses were meticulously designed on a rectangular layout and crafted to a stand between two to three stories in height, ranging from 2.3 to 2.5 meters. The structures were vertically orientated, a design approach that skillfully integrated the practical purposes for each floor while also mirroring the way of life embraced by the inhabitants. Within the Newari community, a prevailing tradition involved constructing houses with three levels. This practice entailed utilizing the first floor for storing household belongings, hosting guests on the second floor, and dedicating the third floor to culinary activities and the kitchen. In each town, a temple was a ubiquitous presence. It was believed that a house height should not exceed the gajur, a decorative ornament of the temple. As a ritual, houses typically reach a maximum of five floors. These houses were designed to accommodate joint families. Even the royal palace of the Malla kings were designated with three or four stories. As time progressed, the addition of an extra floor became prevalent and was simply referred to as piata, signifying the fourth floor, located just below the attic. Over time, a trend emerged among the privileged classes and affluent families to construct a terrace on the fifth floor. Distinct names were assigned to each floor, reflecting their specific function. The ground floor was referred to as Chali, the first floor as Mata, the second floor as Chota, and the attic as Baika. The utilization of different floors exhibited variation according to the socio-economic status of the inhabitants. The specific use of the ground floor, known as Chali, was observed to differ based on residents' occupation. Among the farming community, the Chali functioned as a storage area for agricultural tools, fertilizers, farm produce, and livestock. In contrast, occupational groups like Nakarmi, iron smith, Tambrakar or coppersmiths, and Silpakar or wood cleavers repurposed the ground floor for their respective workshop. Similarly, the business community repurposed the ground floor for shops and warehouses to store their merchandise goods. For houses situated along prominent streets, the front section often served as an open shop space, while the rear section led to an internal courtyard. The strategic placement of shops on the lower floor was intentional, establishing a direct link between the street and the building. In the architectural layout of Newari houses, a central courtyard serves as a communal area where family members congregate. However, among the aristocrats and within royal courtyards, the central space often serves diverse functions, including stories, accommodation for guards, and the performance of household rituals. The ground floor of Newari house is equipped with a wooden staircase, typically positioned at one corner. This staircase typically consists of a single flight placed on one side of the layout. Additionally, on the ground floor, one can find the presence of bathrooms, further highlighting the multifunctional and practical design of these traditional houses. The primary function of the first floor was dedicated to sleeping, and entry to this level was accessible to individuals belonging to the same family. This limitation was imposed due to the significant emphasis placed on maintaining privacy and ensuring security within the Newari community. To enhance the security of a house, a distinctive Newari window known as Aki Chal was incorporated on the ground floors. These specialized windows were designed in a way that allowed occupants to see outside while preventing anyone from seeing inside. 
However, on the upper floors, open windows were more prevalent, serving different purposes. The second floor of Nevari houses served as a living room and a space for receiving visitors. The windows on this floor were usually designed to be larger, allowing ample light to enter and enabling occupants to observe activities occurring in the courtyards and streets below. The first floor, known as Mata, is designated for personal rooms, while the second floor, called Chota, is utilized for receiving visitors. Additionally, the uppermost section, referred to as the attic or Buinga, serves as a kitchen area. The roof is a critical component of any house, providing shelter and protection from rain and weather. In a traditional Newari houses, the roofs are designed with a slope on two sides, typically ranging from 30 to 45 degrees on both the front and rear elevation. Additionally, the roof extends outward on both sides for approximately 2.5 to 3 feet. It's worth noting that a single slope roof, which rests solely on the back wall, is uncommon in traditional neighborhood architecture. This design is considered inauspicious and therefore its construction is avoided to the greatest extent possible. The roofs of Nevari houses are often pagoda style with multiple tiers and pitch angles. These roofs provide a distinctive silhouette to the houses and are sometimes adorned with terracotta or metal ornaments. Traditional Nevari houses are characterized by their extensive use of inti craft carved wooden elements. Traditional Nevari houses are not only architectural wonders but also hold historical significance as they represent the region's past social, cultural and economic context. While these structures are now regarded as distinct and traditional in appearance, it's important to note that they were constructed using locally sourced materials during their time. The main building components consisted of sun-dried bricks, mud mortar, tiles and wood. These materials contributed to the creation of several distinctive features including carved wooden doors and windows, tile roof and the use of wooden beams for structural integrity. Newar wood carving stands out as one of the most intricate forms globally and this expertise is evident in elements such as the Sanjia or Newari windows. These windows serve as a testament to the exceptional skill of Newari wood carving and its representation of artistic prowess. For the Newa, a home is not just comprised of concrete walls but is a sentiment and embodiment of their culture. They engage in daily rituals to honor their homes, such as offering pure water known as Ganga Jal. Additionally, they adorn the doorways on both sides with vermilion and flowers every morning, showcasing their deep reverence for their living spaces. On special occasion and auspicious celebration, each doorway is offered a puja, highlighting the significance of spiritual connection to their homes. The doorways in Newari architecture are intentionally designed with a smaller height prompting visitors to perform a customary bow when entering. This act mirrors the act of bowing in reverence before deities, signifying a gesture of respect. For Newars, a household, the same sacred significance as a temple, emphasizing the spiritual and cultural importance they attach to their homes. In the past, the rulers would often enter Newari settlement with the intention of pursuing the attractive women of the Newar community. Safeguarding the young woman from the ruler class individuals proved to be a challenging task. Many from the ruling class would enter homes and forcefully take away beautiful Newari girls. Given the societal and political circumstances of that era, raising objection or resisting such acts was extremely difficult, regardless of the grave injustice perpetrated by the rulers. To safeguard Newari daughters from the advances of the ruling class, Leaders within the Newa community devise a strategy. They alter the design of houses and the main village doors. During that period, the rulers had a distinctive practice of never walking with their heads bowed, as they believe it would diminish their stature and be considered an ill omen. Consequently, if there was an entrance with lower dimensions, the rulers would avoid entering through it. Due to the prevalent issue of Newar girls being subjected to teasing by the members of the ruling class whenever they ventured outside, the ancestors of the Newar community devised this strategic architectural approach. 
Their intention was to prevent ruling class individuals from entering the town altogether, thereby ensuring the safety of all Newari girls. While the Newar community predominantly settled in key areas such as Kathmandu, Bhaktapur and Lalitpur, only a limited number of traditional Newari homes remain in existence today. The advent of new technologies and the influence of Western concrete building trends have led to a decline in the preservation of the distinct Newari architectural style. As a result, the unique characteristics that define Newari homes have gradually diminished. In the present day, the prevalence of modern home decoration techniques has led to the rarity of constructing houses in a traditional style. Even in historically significant settlements like Bungamati, Kokana and Harisiddhi, the construction of buildings in the traditional style has become infrequent. Notably, settlements from the Malla period such as Techo, Sunakoti, Harisiddhi, Thaiba, Lubu, Siddipur and Toka in Kathmandu as well as Panga, Naikap, Bhajangal and the core settlements of Kirtipur and Bhaktapur have been abundant in terms of preserving their traditional architectural heritage. In addition to the loss of historical significance, the displacement of original construction techniques has also occurred. Following the earthquake, a significant number of individuals who embark on the rebuilding process opted for modern architectural style. This trend has heightened the potential for the erosion of authenticity and cultural heritage, posing a risk to the preservation of the originality that these structures once held. In Nepal, there exists a prevailing perception that individuals residing in older homes are economically disadvantaged. Consequently, many opt to demolish their old residence in favor of modern concrete structures. Until a few decades ago, the core urban areas within the Kathmandu Valley boasted a distinctive architectural style. Regrettably, such houses are gradually vanishing. With the process of accelerating, particularly after the 2015 earthquake, largely due to the modernization of housing. Previously adorned with Newar architecture, the town has witnessed a sharp decline in such structure. One contributing factor to this transformation has been the earthquake. Over the past decade, the entire landscape of valley has undergone a drastic change as evident from historical images shared on social media. The traditional thatched roof have given way to concrete construction. The swift towards modern houses stems for their convenience, offering increased space and accessibility to materials and construction skills. The expertise required to construct traditional neighborhood house is progressively dwindling. Building an old-style house demands a distinct skill set when compared to modern house techniques. As a result, the construction of traditional structures faces challenges due to the diminishing availability to this specialized skill. While we take pride in the significant number of tourists who visit our region each year, it's imperative that we consider the underlying reasons behind their visit. Tourists are drawn to our destination to experience our unique culture and heritage, a significant component of which is embodied by the traditional Newari houses. This realization underscores the crucial importance of safeguarding Newa architecture for future generations. The Kathmandu Valley can be viewed as a living repository of heritage, a testament to the enduring value of our cultural identity. To ensure its continuity, we must take proactive measures to conserve these time-honored traditional houses and imbue them with cultural significance. These old dwellings are not just physical structures. They are integral to Kathmandu's cultural legacy. They hold a special allure that attracts visitors from around the globe, reinforcing the urgency for their preservation. We are very proud of how many tourists visit us in a year, but do we think about why they visit us? Tourists come here to see our culture and heritage which includes these traditional Newar houses and that is the main reason we need to save Newa architecture for future. Kathmandu Valley is like a living heritage and for that to continue, we have to preserve these old traditional houses and make them culturally significant too. The old houses are part of Kathmandu's cultural heritage. It is something that tourists from all over the world come to see, which is why there is a need to protect traditional Newari houses. Thank you.